Today is Friday, January 20th, and you should be reading Mark chapter 15. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some things that I found interesting in this chapter. Then I'm going to talk about what I learned about Jesus and what I learned about people. And finally, I'm going to talk away about a next step that I can take and you can take as well. And one of the first things I noticed in this chapter was how as Jesus is being accused of different things and Pilate is questioning him, Jesus refuses to answer because I think he answering wouldn't have helped anything he knew and that uh, he's being accused of, let me flip the page, being the king of the Jews, right? And Jesus doesn't answer that because he, I mean, he is the king of the Jews, but more importantly, he's the king of everybody, right? So Jesus isn't going to answer that. And Pilate was actually impressed because I think he knew that Jesus not answering was going to be worse for him. And then also what I found interesting is how at the end of the chapter in the burial of Jesus, it says Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead, that Jesus had already died. It was like Pilate was expecting a miracle from Jesus, expecting something more. Because I think after talking to Jesus in that first section, he realized that Jesus was something more. He was amazed with Jesus, impressed with Jesus, and knew that. In that moment, I think that he was maybe something more than just a criminal. And so what, I, what do I learn about Jesus? Well, I learned that Jesus, it says that surely this man was the son of God, right? So we, we learned that he's the son of God. I mean, we've confirmed this over and over again these last couple of chapters. But we also see that Jesus, he died in a very painful way, but he was willing to do that. You know, he calls out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He, he feels forsaken. He has these emotions and he shares them and he's honest with them. And I think it's just really interesting that Jesus, he felt the pain and he felt being torn from God. And, and it was, you know, he, he died. He died. But he died for us. He was willing to go through that for us. And, and I just, I find a lot of comfort in that, and that Jesus was willing to do that for us. And what, what do we learn about people? Well, people follow the crowd. Often when there's a crowd gathering and stuff, it's, it's so much easier just to go with the crowd. You know, they were, Pilate was saying, do you want me to release Barbarus? or to release Jesus. And they're like, we want this murderer released and we want you to crucify Jesus. They said, crucify him, crucify him. Even though Jesus hadn't done anything. And they, I mean, a couple of chapters ago, we're calling him Hosanna, Hosanna. It's so easy to get caught up and follow in the crowd. And sometimes we get distracted when we do that. And finally, what is the next step? Well, I think the next step is to break away from the crowd, to start doing something different. In the last section where the burial of Jesus, it says that Joseph went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' his body. Went boldly because he knew that it was something different from what everybody else was doing. Everybody else was cheering for him, mocking, cheer, cheering for Jesus' death, mocking Jesus. And after he died, this, this man Joseph went over and said, can, can I bury him? Can I give him a proper resting place? He broke away from the crowd. And that's what we need to do. Instead of sometimes following in what's easier and going with the crowd, is willing to make a stand and say, no, that's not right. We are called to love. We are called to do these things. And that's, that's what we should be doing, even when it um, ends up with us being mocked and us being hurt. Because Jesus wants us to stand for him. And so that's, that's the next step I really think is important that I need to take sometimes. And I think we all do sometimes. It's really easy to, to, to fall away and to follow the crowd. And so now I'm going to read Mark chapter 15. So if you have other things you need to get doing, or you've already read the, the chapter and don't want to listen to me read it, feel free to take off. But if you want to listen to me read it, I'm going to start doing that. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, Aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus still made no reply, and, P and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. 
a man called Barbarus was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barba Barbus instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. Again they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgoth, Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh. He did not take it, and they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let the, this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At th and at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabbat. I don't even know, friends. <laughs> Which means, my God, my God, what have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. Some ran, someone ran, filled a sponge with wine, vinegar, and put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women had, who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. It was preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent me member of the council who was with himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of the rock. When he rolled, Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where he was laid. And until next time, you have said.